Hey guys, welcome back. It's me, your host, Hebot. And today, I have a brand new, exciting action figure review, as you can see here in front of you, of the Storm Collectibles Samurai Showdown Harumaru. And you know, as you guys, I've been telling you from before, I am your action figure enthusiast and video game aficionado. And I like to do a lot of video game related action figure reviews on my channel because they correlate and coincide together very well. Now, I am for sure, like I told you guys, uh, not the best reviewer in the world, but I try to be as detailed and as uh, honest as I possibly can with every review. Now, this is courtesy of myself. This was not donated to me by, you know, store collectibles, even though I'm not telling them to, but I bought it because I love the way the figure looked, and it's video game related. The same way, I already pre-ordered, you know, the the Streets of Rage uh, upcoming figure of, uh, uh, I forget his name, and Dimitri from Dark Siders. Dark Siders. So, let's get right to it. This is a brand new episode of Toys in My Closet. Welcome. I hope you stick around, and I hope you enjoy, so, and you have yourself so a good time, you know, just have a digital drink, sit back and relax. So, let's start off real fast and real quick with the box. As you can see, the box is in the same color accents of, you know, Samurai Showdown, the video game. And I believe this is based off the brand new one that came out just recently from SNK. You see some nice writing here on the top corner. As you can see right here in Japanese lettering, right? We'll bring it down here. And then you see a very beautiful promotional shot of Harumaru right there. Samurai Showdown, Storm Collectibles, a amazingly uh, captured uh, promotional shot of the figure. It says Harumaru and Samurai Showdown there on the very top. Let's whoop, zoom back out, as you can see there. Then we'll turn it around, as you can see in the back. We have some nice, really nice promotional shots of Harumaru, uh, the actual figure, in the distinct poses that he does, or that you could pose him in, as you can see. Uh, you know, uh, because of the fact that he comes with some really nice pieces. As you see there, from the three head portraits, which are very, very nice. A effect of the sword, the blade, and a couple of higher positionings. He's really nice. He looks really nice in packaging. And the packaging is really nice. Very premium feel to it, but in the same traditional style of, as we all know already and expect from Storm Collectibles. Mm -hmm. Samurai Showdown there. Harumaru, the the picture of him in the video game graphic style in the polygons of the video game. As you can see. Then on the top it says Samurai Showdown. And then in the bottom, Samurai Showdown with all the legalese in Japanese writing, right? So I picked up this from the Storm Collectibles website directly. About, I think was maybe, I want to say eight months ago, I pre-ordered it, and I finally got it in. It was a retail price for them of uh, 80 bucks plus shipping and and uh, and a tax. It came out to like 115 110 something around that range. So, he is a premium figure. He's not something that everybody just calls and gets. But the nice thing about Storm Collector is they kind of space out the way they release their figure lines and their licenses. So if you don't like a particular license and you like something particular like let's say this, which I would love to get the ones from the King of Fighters, but I never got a chance to get the Terry Bogart, which I completely adore that character. Um, you know, you just can do it based on cherry picking the way you feel like it. So let's get him out of box. Let's take a closer look and let's see what he has to offer. So please, uh, just stay right there, 
Don't move. I'll be right back in a blink of an eye. And here we have Harumaru out of packaging. And as you can see, first and foremost, I'll try to zoom it in a little bit. The first thing you'll notice is the beautiful insert that comes with inside each of the packaging. And this is one of the levels of the game that represents, I believe, Harumaru stage. I could be wrong, but I'm almost 100% sure. So now let's take a closer look at Harumaru. And as you can see, Harumaru looks absolutely spectacular because he's an amazing representation of what he looks like in the actual game. Now, I'm trying to focus on him. And as you can see, the beautiful details in his face with the grunt. He has a scar right there on the chin. The eyes are painted. This piece is here, a separate piece in the front that actually moves a, a little bit. It seems to be glued in. Now this is one of his hair flocks because he has a humongous, humongous ponytail with the red, uh, po you know, bandana holding it uh, in the back. And this has to be plugged in. This is actually a separate piece inside the packaging. He comes with two different styles of hair. The one that poofs up, like the traditional one, and the one that actually, you know, um, what you call it, uh, that is actually, um, more down, like when he's wet kind of look. You see his gi with the black stripes of black outline on the gi. The very nice texture, kind of orangey, like an, like an orangey look to it on his uh, chest, his arms. And this is all in a matte finish. And it's really nice because it's a soft, rubbery plastic. So when you move the figure, if you can see, it looks almost like a natural movement, like a real, you know, character, human being moving with the rubber in the neck, for example. Here's the arm with the actual red gauntlet there. It looks more red on the camera. But it's actually a more toned down red. Other side as well. And then you have the actual red belt with the little uh, sheet um, holder for his sword, as you can see. And then he has his uh, uh, flask, I guess, or ancient flask, where they would carry water or alcohol. Uh, drunken masters used to use these a lot when they would fight drunk in one of the techniques in one of the uh, martial arts styles uh, where Jackie Chang did a lot of those movies from back in the day then you see the black hair really nicely painted line work is sculpted really nicely and very cleanly painted now this part here is more of a solid plastic and uh, you know you think it would hinder because it's so big and thick but in reality it really doesn't so that's nice and you see his actual red uh, socks coming down to his slippers samurai slippers and as you can see the samurai slippers there have the nice uh, stitching and line work and basically very 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 detailed and then the bottom as well and they never have pegs in the bottom store color and then you turn it around and this is what he looks like from the back with that big gaping hole but that's for the articulation of course of the legs the double jointed which you don't even see there's no pins and there's no uh, you know cuts so that you can notice that it has the actual so once again let's take a closer look at his face looking very nice um, I am trying to record this in 4k 60 uh, for the first time on my camera so hopefully it'll come through really nice once I upload it and you guys will be able to enjoy it enjoy it at the highest quality that I can possibly show it in and present it to you so now let's take a look at Harumaru's accessories so I'll be right back And here we have Harumaru's accessories. And as you can see, he comes with a nice amount, but it's mainly, mainly like cosmetic stuff, like extra hair, 
a special effect for sword, you know, uh, two facial expressions, which are portraits, and four sets of hands, which would be eight hands all together. So, we'll start off with the hands. It comes with, obviously, two open with two open hands as we can see there two open hands that's number one then he comes with two hands that are more like uh, how do you call it um, kind of to do like a martial arts type of pose or like a power Kind of, kind of semi, what you would call semi open, right? Fell so, down, sorry. Semi open. You can see there. Then he comes with the grip hands, as you can see, for the sword on both sides. Even though one thumb seems to be higher raised than the other, but it's the same. It's the same for. I like the texture work that's done but it almost looks like realistic skin. Sorry man, you know the camera zoom. Um then he has these which are the fist hands. As you saw that he had on them and then he's the vein work in there and everything really nice. Then of course you have the first portrait the X one three all together and this one is really nice to look looking. With the grunt and you see it has the spawn chin, the teeth, the eyes looking very angry. Some washes in there of like a red it looks like and or yeah like a reddish kind of wash. With the peg for you know the actual earpiece. Here is the other portrait. He has kind of that grit of cockiness, like he knows he's going to defeat you with a little smirk and snare. Also, with the uh, scars, the sideburns, looking like he has the slick back with the gel. His earlobes are really detailed as well. The eyebrows, I mean, it's done really well. Then we have his other ponytail, like I said. Same scope, very nicely sculpted with the bandana and red. And you see that it's more draping down, kind of like he's in a, a wet type of look. Then, of course, we have the sheath for the sword. And mine has a little pink damage there, but that's not something that usually happens with storm. They're pretty good with that stuff. Painted in a beautiful metallic gold with the hilt of the sword, the red with the straps coming down, you see that the straps on the actual hilt here are black with the silver chrome, then you pull out the sword, it has that nice, really nice sheen to it, that gunmetal look, it even has the inscriptions in writing in Japanese, you see there. Really, really nice. The attention to detail, which Storm has just gotten better and better, and that's why they charge what they charge for the figures, because they just feel quality. You know, they can't be denied. They feel quality, but they're not overly, overly priced. So here we have the effect, which has a blended kind of look to it, with an orangey to a yellow blend. Um, it's going to be hard because of the fact of how it is color of it um, to probably represent, represent the camera but I hope it comes through it's a nice speckle detail to it it's like translucent but not very overly translucent so that is his accessories so now what we'll do is we'll move on back to his articulation okay guys so now let's take a look uh, Haramura's articulation so we'll come in closer, and as you can see there, let's brighten this up. 
we're going to start off with his head articulation and head articulation you notice I put the hair that's draping down he can move left and right then he can look down a ridiculous amount keeping him straight he can still look down that much right then he can look back that much even though you have some gapage but he can you know you and if you move the, the let's say the ponytail over you can look down even more or up even more rather right? sorry then obviously he has a wonderful wonderful ability to tilt as you can see very good he has a very nice range of movement then here in the shoulders got 180 degrees and the wonderful butterfly joint bicep swivel is a double in the elbow which goes up very nicely and it looks nice and you know and rounded so it doesn't look odd it's got the ball pegs like the McFarlane figures but just bigger and deep in more which is the technique I said that McFarlane should use so that they don't look as obtrusive and you can you know move left and right and in this side up and down movement and in this side I think I had it that way if you had the ball pick that way you can move in and out now in the torso area he has two cuts he does have the way swivel and th that sound is actually a pretty normal for stone collectibles and he has the movement on you know the upper torso that crunch allows him to look down about that much and then it allows him to move back that much but if you add the crunch together with the torso area and the waist area you can look like down a ridiculous amount as you can see and then he can hyper extend back oop that head came off it's on a double ball but he can hyper extend back quite a lot as well as you can see then you have uh, this little movement here. You can move this to different directions, really nice. And then, like I said, these things move as well. You can move forward, you can move it backwards, and even the little hilt uh, sheath for the actual uh, sword sheath, the hilt for the sword sheath. Then down here, this is plastic, but it doesn't hinder his mobility. Um, as you'll see down here, he has, he still has the ability to have a uh, you can see a thigh swivel. He can do the splits still about that much, which is pretty pretty good. He has a double in the knee. Then up here in the top of the red sock, he can move left and right, which would be the boot cut, and then obviously up that much, down a whole lot, and then the pivot on the toe, as you can see. So that's what he offers far as articulation. Now let's zoom out a little bit or zoom in back a little bit and now let's put in accessories. Let's see what it looks like with the accessories. Oh yeah, he can kick up about that much and then he can also kick back 
about that much. So not too bad, for sure. I mean, this is harder plastic, so it's kind of a little harder to be able to pull back more because it's so big and poofy, but it doesn't hinder him from doing his, you know, his, uh, his moves or, or putting him in a nice pose. Now I'm looking for the strap. Here, let's put the sheath this way here. Um, that's on him. It goes this way here, like so. And you gotta raise it all the way to the top to about that much. That's the way it has always been. And if you want to move it back some, you can just move it back a little, like so. And then the sword. And put it in his hand like so let's put him in a dynamic pose the sword in his hand let's see I have the sword go up this way let's change his face let's put the other face on with the other this one I think looks more menacing let's put that one on move this over Comes right on as you can see. Turn them that way. Have his hands like that. And then for the finishing touch, we'll add the sword effect. Like so. Let's see. Put them right there. Let's see. It's kind of hard for me to stand them because of the space area in my head. You know, it's kind of tight, so I have to work around it. There it is, right there. And there you have, there you have him in a nice little dynamic pose. He looks pretty, pretty spectacular, and. Let's put the piece here back on his belt. His samurai belt. Samurai. I am a samurai. I am a samurai. A samurai. There you go. Give him a little attitude. By tilting the head over a little bit, so I'm, you know, subtle. Something that looks really, really nice. The hair billowing to the side as if there was wind, like so. I think he looks fantabulous. He looks really good. There you go. There you go. And he looks fantastico. Ladies and gentlemen, fantastico. So let's bring some figures just for the sake of comparison to see how he stacks up. So what we'll do is we'll bring a another stone collectible right next to him, which is the yellow Cyrax from Mortal Kombat from Stone Collectibles. Another amazing figure, by the way. I haven't reviewed them because I got them in that sale. Were you able to get the three for 130? with the purple and the red, but I haven't really reviewed them, so I'll try to. If I don't, oh, well, I'm sorry. And let's put them next to... Let's see. Lino from the Thundercats. Mattel, Maddie Collector. It's Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats. Let's move this over. Let's, put, let's, let's move... Aramaru over and line over. So as you can see, they all stack up because they're all within the seven inch scale very nicely. And on the shelf, you can make them look however you want. They'll look spectacular, spectacular. So let's try out some other little comparisons really quick. Move these guys over. Let's see who else we can bring in. Let's try and put him next to Skeletor from Retro Origins, right there. Wow, 
very beautiful colors, even though he's so small and the design is so dated. And then let's put him next to Zeb from Star Wars Black Series from the Clone Rebel Wars animation. And you can see Zeb is a little tiny bit taller than him, even though his hair is billowing in. But Zeb is a little taller, but he looks fantastic. And then let's do one more. Um, let's do one more. Who else can we bring in? Just to differentiate with different lines. Let's see. Let's see. Um, let's bring in B. Check from the Hasbro G.I. Joe Cobra Island Target Exclusive G.I. Joe Classified. And let's bring in. in Rob Liefeld's Maverick. Very colorful, very beautiful color. Very beautiful figures. All these figures are fantabulous. So like I said, they will look amazing next to each other in a shelf. It all depends how you like to present them and display them. And really, you know, it's up to you. It's your collection. It's how you like to display your figs, you know? It's, it's not really a rule of thumb behind it other than maybe scaling for some that they absolutely have to have the same scale but he's six inch and he still looks cool next to him same thing like uh you know maverick so now let's uh give my final thoughts and end the review so guys my final thought on the Havamora from storm collectibles from obviously Samurai Showdown is he's a fantastic figure. Mm -hmm. He is um, anything and everything you expect as far as the aesthetics, the representation. Sword Collectibles really knocked it out of the park with this one. Um, there's a lot of other characters that I can't wait to see uh, how they're going to bring and represent and bring to the table um, because they have some really cool characters in Samurai Showdown. And uh, he is the embodiment from pixel to plastic to the hundredth degree. He's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, yes, he's pricey. I understand that. Um, and I know that uh, he's a premium pa you know, uh, product character. But if you can afford it, I guess. And mm -hmm. If you're willing to um, sell out the money for it, you won't be disappointed. He'll be an amazing display piece for your shelf with your other figures so that's my final thought on it and my review guys i hope you enjoyed it i hope you really liked it and as always thank you so much so much for stopping by for all the recent subscribers for all the support for all the love um you guys make it all worth it and without you it's not you know, worth the time of day, and it's not possible. Um, please leave a thumbs up if you liked the video. Leave a thumbs down if you didn't like the video. And as always, please share it with someone you think might enjoy the video. Now, leave a comment down below what you think yourself of the figure. What are your thoughts if you bought them and picked them up yourself? Or if you don't like them, or what don't you like, whatever it is, you know, it's nice to have conversation as long as it's done in style and respectfully. So, if you guys uh, are new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. You're very, uh, you know, welcome to stop, you know, for stopping by. Um, and uh, if, you if you decided to subscribe, uh, like I said, um, and like I always try to say, you know, Thank you so much because I know you don't have to. But since you did, I consider you now part of my family. And as always, if you guys ever want to help me out in any way, shape, or form, or you have the means how, or want to make donations to me, or anything like that, I'll be more than honored to do so. And there, you know how you can do it. And it's because it's all down in the description down below. And if you want to look for me on social media, I am on, obviously... YouTube, Twitter, under HeBot, Powerful Gamer, and on Twitter, uh, I mean Instagram, I'm under C underscore respect, 
as you go, you know, as you know, and and on YouTube, I'm under he bot. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I feel blessed to have had my hands on this figure, and I wish all of you to have the same fortune. And keep collecting, you know, be safe. Still doing it. We're still in trying times. Respect those out there because we just want to make things better, not worse. Mm -hmm. And as always, uh, you know, it means the world to me. Love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. This is your host, Hebot, signing off with another episode of Toys in My Closet. Bye-bye.